experts in doing business in Africa and have recently assisted a SaaS company in generating $700,000 worth of revenue in six different industries and five different regions. Today's attendees demographics include business leaders and heads from Africa, Europe, Asia, and, and Americas, and over six different industries, which include software as a service, financial services, management consulting, mechanical or industrial engineering, marketing and advertising. Um, now we are all here because 2020 was not easy, but we have survived and it is now time to thrive. Today, we will be discussing what we learned in 2020 and what it means in 2021. I'm joined by guest speaker, growth hacker, head of digital marketing at DHL, Yasir, and our few tech partners, co-founder of Phonite, the former COO of HSBC, Ritesh, and Gavin, our moderator, a prize-winning chartered accountant who grew annual recurring revenue of a SaaS business by 80% in nine months. Wow, Gavin. Gavin, the platform is yours, my friend. Angel, thank you so much. Welcome, everybody. Um, my role today, this afternoon, is to moderate our conversation. Um, I've got three pre-prepared questions to start us off that I'll be presenting to Yasir and to Ritesh. But in addition to that, I'd like you in the chat box to, as you hear the conversation, the debate go on, to type in your own questions, please. And we will select some of those questions to put forward to both Ritesh and to Yasir in the conversation. So welcome all to this webinar this afternoon. I wanna just dive straight into the first of the questions. And that's a contextual one around the journey that we've been on over the last 12 months. And the question is, how has 2020, 2021 so far changed the landscape for businesses operating in the digital space? So how has the last 12 months changed the landscape for business operating in the digital space? Ritesh, do you want to kick off? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Kevin. And thanks, Angel. It's a pleasure to be here. And good afternoon, everybody. And more. In 2020, it's been pretty tremendous here in terms of uh, the digital Right. So I, I would rather talk about man, what, what, why it is different than the previous crisis. Because when we look into 2008, we have seen the financial crisis, we have survived pretty well. But that really didn't matter because the previous crisis mainly impacted financials. Right? This crisis in 2020 impacted people first and then the financials. So the digital is pretty much taken a center stage. We were hearing about digital quite regularly. I come from the financial services and the payments background. So we have been digital and we have been talking about digital for uh, ages. But the mode of digital and the adoption has increased tremendously. So I'm sure you must have heard umpteen times that the kind of transformation we have seen in six months, we wouldn't have seen in three to five years. And that's true. There are multiple examples I can throw in from the trade finance to the banking bringing in new applications, modifying their applications to increase their digital adoption by the people because people have faced a lot of challenges in making their day-to-day -day payments. Think around from the financial services perspective because payments is the basic, which is ingrained into the day-to-day -day life. And the focus was like how we can make it life easier for the people. So the innovation like where uh, banks have come, come up with a solution where they can put a limit on your card so you can give it to your neighbor and they can go and do shopping on your behalf without you worrying about that they will uh, spend uh, everything in your account, right? So these sort of solutions which have come up overnight increment into the contactless payments limit into the Western world, as well as what we have seen in African region, significant growth into digital payments over the period of time in 2020. So this is about the payments and financial services. Apart from this, what we have seen uh, tremendous growth into the B2B matchmaking because uh, there are businesses which are which have got beautiful solutions that can solve day-to-day -day problems of people, whether they are working in offices or working remotely or uh, whether for the education institutes, whether they can't provide education in person. So these businesses have grown tremendously during this pandemic. 
digital adoption has obviously needless to say it has taken a pace and we are going to see this continuing uh, going forward as well. Thank you, Itesh. Um, yes, yeah. How do you want to add to that? So, you know, what are the changes you've seen in the landscape for businesses operating in the digital space over the last twelve months? Uh, thank you, Gavin. Uh, so, I completely agree with uh, Ritesh, and there have been quite a few uh, times this have been mentioned that a lot has changed in one year, and what in six months, and what we were expecting to change in five years or ten years has happened in in just one year already. So. Uh, the main thing is that a lot of people have moved from good to have in in our case uh, what i see mostly in social media or digital marketing it has moved towards the must have so if i give you a small stats uh, there are if if we take the january report of uh, hot suite and we are social there are 4.2 billion people who are on now social media and 500 million of them just joined last year so so the conclusion is that the people who were resisting it previously has also accepted as well and it's not only for social media it goes for e-commerce as well for a lot of time e-commerce was the only way an easiest way to order grocery in 2020 so a lot of people who were not really comfortable with it or who like to enjoy the retail part has to move towards it or has to try it now how many of it will remain into it after the things get normal it's up to see but what i believe that is this is just a small change a lot more will change in the next 2 to 3 years and all of the companies the tech companies are gunning for it uh, we have mostly seen what at the moment was what was necessary so for example zoom became the necessary so a lot of people adopted it but a lot of adoption is still left and we will see it in the 2 to 3 years the landscape will completely change Thank you, thank you, Yasir. So I want to move on to the next question. Is um, let's to build on that. Is what further industry trends are you seeing taking place now? So we've seen a shift and a greater adoption adoption of social media and produce presumably greater time on social media. We've seen a shift or increased use of digital payments. What other industry trends are we seeing, Yasir? Do you want to pick up with that one? thank you gavin okay uh, so uh, if i if i refer to it as you mentioned the time on the social media yes that has tremendously increased and the more important thing that 2020 did that communities become more and more powerful and social media is became uh, is becoming an important channel for all type of industries and customers you might have read the last week about the game stop and the reddit whole scenario and the community is becoming powerful and powerful so that is the case for for all type of business it is not only for one type of business but you will see the impact of it in the financial industry in education industry and for it it has become a way for businesses rather it's b2b or b2b the channel may be different the social media may be different but uh, it 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 the communities are are forming and it is the best way to reach uh, the communities uh, from now on so one example of it that facebook and all of those companies are already ready for it in december 2020 uh, facebook acquired a customer service platform uh, known as customer for 1 million dollars the reason for it is they they are seeing that more and more people would want to use social media for not only just for marketing purposes but as a basis of connecting with the customers engaging with the customers and even nurturing the customers fantastic ritesh other industry trends that you see taking place right now so sure. uh, the first and foremost i would say before the industry trends of what has happened over the period of time and i would completely agree to yasir it has changed the people's perception and the behavior and customer behavior is playing this major role right now adoption has grown up rapidly because of the pandemic situation so we are seeing that adoption digital adoption in all facets of life from e-commerce to the payments to uh, your regular services that you get at home and uh, you name it and you they are changing the mode to digital even when it comes down to doing businesses into different regions and sectors it is going more digitally because earlier when you think from a business when they were selling into the different regions it was mainly uh, 
focused around the human interaction and the conversations, which has gone digital. When we were building up the teams earlier, I come from a largest bank. Uh, when we were going up the teams globally, the focus was around the cost as well as the efficiency. And now there are no boundaries. You can build business wherever you want and wherever it suits you in terms of the cost and operation. So the adoption from logistics to supply chain, for an example, Musk is building up a completely different model for the supply chain. They are largest shipping company in the world. And I was transforming Musk uh, from 2016 to 18. Now they are completely transforming the supply chain model where you give the requirement and they will get it delivered, manufactured and get it delivered globally. So obviously the face of the businesses is changing completely as well as uh, it's only because of the digital. So it's not an option anymore. And similarly in the education industry. So we have seen a lot of transition of the people from going from one region to another, but now you can get all the education, whatever you want sitting at your home. And the universities have adopted it pretty well over the period of time. And nowadays technology is cheap. So the big techs, what they've done, they have pushed people to adopt digitally easy and they have made it easy and they have changed the customer perception. And on the top of that, the pandemic has played a significant role. Uh, you see it from a DHL perspective, what shifts in consumer behavior have you seen? Uh, in terms of uh, DHL Express, what we see most that customer has become more demanding in a way. Uh, they they want more immediate. So it's because maybe because they are spending too much time on social media and they have a lot of time on there. So the, the follow-up has become very important. So proactive notifications, uh, advanced customer service, even if there's a delay, because in 2020, there have been a lot of, uh, there have been a lot of reasons for delays, right? But the customer expects you to inform them proactively and their expectation of service have tremendously increased. They want to be informed. They want to be responded at a faster space, and 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 that and they have all. Uh, if if you don't respond to them, then soon it will go viral. So you you really have to be really really invested, uh, because uh, one the customer has realized now that they has all the power. And how you know from a from a responsiveness point of view, how are you seeing whether it's DHL Express or other tech businesses? How are you responding? How it's how are they responding to that increased demand in terms of timely response from from customers? Okay, so if if I if I take the specific example of what we did, uh, we went completely social. So you have to adopt all the mediums. Uh, so in those cases. Uh, social media uh, management has become important. Uh, it, it's scalable as well. Uh, you can respond to a lot more customers uh, at the same time. Uh, it's much easier than managing the call. Uh, so, so in a way, a lot of a lot of customer has already accepted that you might get a response from social media at a faster pace. So they try to reach you, and you have to you have to make sure that you are technologically uh, advanced enough to respond to them, to manage those conversations, to follow up with them. And uh, your whole business should be integrated from social media. It cannot be a separate channel. It has to be integrated. You have to, after the follow up, you have to respond to them over there. So it, it has become it has become very, very important. And the companies like all the social media management softwares and all of that, have benefited for it and there are now available tools and techniques to easily manage uh, uh, multiple platforms, multiple communities and make sure uh, uh, respond to them. One more thing that is really, really important is to be authentic, be uh, accept uh, openly. So the people really prefer the brands which come forward when the mistakes happen because mistakes will keep happening. It's not like it has become a social world so the mistakes won't happen. But uh, you have to, rather than covering up, you have to own it and then uh, people will understand. Great, fantastic. Um, Ritesh, you know, there, there is, as you said before, a, a big shift to digital. 
Um, what do you think that presents in terms of opportunities? You know, what are the opportunities in 2021 and beyond in terms of the digitization of services? So uh, it's all driven by one thing that is your consumer, right? Their perception has changed as well as uh, what Yasser has mentioned around the channels. So customer is expecting minimal friction in the services and they are looking for more integrated services as well as uh, instant gratification have always been there, but it has taken a center stage where a customer would like to uh, be benefited and they would like you as a business to understand what they need, when they need and how they need. So you as a business need to understand your customer better. So it has opened up a channel for the big tech companies and as well as the service provider or especially the digital service provider, whether you consider from the UPaaS, CPaaS, platforms of the cloud services. If I can just pick up example of the cloud services business from uh, big techs, from AWS, Amazon to Google to Microsoft, even IBM, they have grown up over 80% in 2020, right? So the businesses are moving digital, going digital. They are moving, adopting new technologies because they are much faster, scalable, and cheaper. And at the same time, it opens up a lot more door for the businesses who are who have been successful in the other regions, say, uh, especially the payment gateway businesses, pretty successful in European market as well as from Asia. They have got an opportunity to do and enter into African market capture the market because Africa is growing economy with 54 countries and three largest uh, countries in Africa holds around 50% of the consumption, right? And the challenge is Africa in Africa is around the basic infrastructure. So the technologies like uh, which, are, which can work on the low latency networks, they have got an opportunity to enter and cater a market. And we have seen a, a tremendous growth during this pandemic in African startup space. So the entrepreneurs are innovating quite rapidly and they're addressing the basic challenges, the basic services, which are related to the food, housing, infrastructure, telecom. Telecom is pretty uh, common in Africa, but the challenges with the network. So there are a lot more opportunities that we can think of for the businesses to go in Africa, and not only in Africa, but globally. So uh, if there are any hacks as in B2B growth hacks that you have seen that are working across the digital space that enable you through the medium of uh, social media, through digital, through Zoom and Teams, et cetera, what are some of the B2B growth hacks that you guys have identified? Um, Ritesh, you want to pick up with that and then I'll pass the baton over. So in terms of the B2B growth, what we have seen uh, recently, you must have heard about a lot of acquisitions from global businesses into African market. So they are acquiring businesses to uh, lend and uh, grow in African market, similarly in the global markets as well. From the B2B hex perspective, uh, people need to understand the ecosystem because obviously you can't be physically present over the, uh, to acquire the business or do the business. So you need to be relying on the digital platforms which are available to you and, and identify your customer in a better way. So use the technology to find a potential customer and build and grow your business. And the first and foremost is like, you need to understand what is the USB that you have got to sell and the price point because you, we have seen quite a lot of cross-pollination of the businesses going, uh, going from regions to regions, whether it's related into the financial services or the other sectors. And to grow businesses in the regions, uh, there are underlying reasons for that. One, you want to grow in terms of the numbers or you want to grow in terms of the revenue. You might be having a revenue from the, say, Western region or from the Asia and you might want to grow your business in terms of the number and grab the masses by going into African region, right? So it's uh, if I talk about the B2C businesses, they are more, more focused on to the number of users, which is the daily active users or the monthly active users versus the average revenue per user. 
So you, you really need to understand where you stand in the business, which sector, and then build up your strategy and find the right partner so that they can help you in finding the right B2B partnerships. Great. Yes, here. Do you want to build on that? B2B growth hacks. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so there is one technique that we, uh, that we use currently. Uh, this, is, this is not something really fancy. It's really basic. So what, what we do is we are the first one to celebrate our customers. And, and uh, it, it's come from the old way, but we do it in a social manner because social media is just a tool. As Ritesh mentioned, uh, the behavior of the people will remain the same, right? So it, it's more about people than about the technology. So what we do is, uh, there, there are simple softwares that we use like Owler, Google Alerts, and we set up the alerts for the customers. So anything that comes related to the customers, we are usually the first one to hear about it. I mean, it sends an email to millions of people, but we hear about it and we just celebrate them uh, openly on LinkedIn and all of the social media. And they feel really happy about it because we are cheering for them. So it's about more about uh, growing them and helping them and getting more business. And this hack has been proven really, really useful for all of those small businesses that have been struggling. So a lot of customers has suddenly been featured on our pages and all of that. And they, they started to get some orders and they get really excited. So, so the whole point is, is making other people successful is the, is the only way that, uh, that, that we, uh, that is the biggest B2B hack. I think that can be for any of the enablers like, uh, uh like DHL or any other company. So you're helping your customers get more customers. Yes. Yeah. And by sort of shining the spotlight on them, they're obviously securing more, more orders. Uh, but also you get that kind of like uh, halo effect on DHL Express because of the good that you're sharing. I love that. I love that. Um, I want to speak to a, a point that you made earlier on was about people in terms of the behavior that uh, people are buying more out of necessity. So is there a hack in terms of the messaging in your posts, in your marketing uh, in the way you're positioning your product, that you need to speak more to pain rather than pleasure, more to necessity rather than opportunity. Uh, it it depends on the medium to medium, but I I completely agree with you that uh, at the moment uh, we have to. Uh, there is more in 2020. You have more to be careful for rather than uh, being. Uh, positioning at a lot of times uh, as a necessity. So, uh, for example, that, uh, you know, there is a big business of uh, people who are, uh, who send goods to their loved ones if they are based in another country. So, but at, at this time, you, you really have to choose whether you really want to target those people or not, because uh, it, it can be quite sensitive as well. So uh, being, uh, I think you, uh, the, the sentiment has been really high. And as a, as a marketer, you have to be more to be careful for rather than uh, plain advertising and uh, targeting those behavior. But overall, I think uh, if, if, you, if you have slight empathy and uh, you can use that in the marketing and everything will has seemed to work, uh, if, if you have enough empathy in your, in your campaigns. Uh, Ritesh, would you like to build on that? Uh, I, I couldn't agree more on this one, especially around understanding your customer sentiments and the sentiments are uh, around the customer, around the environment and what's, what we are going through as, you know, understand your people, right? Because ultimately at the end of the day, they are the people. And people remember that how you have treated them in the difficult time rather than anything else. So the empathetic behavior of the brands that goes a uh, long distance, right? Especially when it comes down to, I can, I can build on the negative stories around here, um, which is like, you do not want to push your customer in buying something what they don't need at this point of time when they are going through the economic uncertainties. And that's where you must have heard and read quite a lot of a story around the buy now, pay later, because Buy now, pay later is busy enticing your customer to buy more and pay more than they can afford 
uh, which is not sustainable environment. So obviously we need to focus on the sustainability as well. Yes, you want to grow your business, but there are a lot many ways to grow your business if you be a bit more empathetic and think around environment sustainability as well. Great, great. I love that. Um, so we're, we've been out of necessity pushed into the digital space more and more, you know, more and more people are adopting, whether it's social media or, or, or video means of communication. Uh, you know, as vaccinations kind of roll out and we, we across the globe uh, in different paces, do you think you're going to see um, a, a retraction of some of these steps around digitization, for example, or is this here to stay? It is definitely going uh, to stay and the growth in the digital, uh, we are going to see continuous growth over the period of time. And that period, at least for a decade from here onwards, because what we see the digital adoption was mainly for the social media and it starts from the social media. Now the acceptability is there. So people have started accepting the different channels and the mediums, whether it comes to the e-commerce or their day-to-day -day needs. I've got a store, I've got a Tesco 200 meters away from my home, but I would rather order online than going to the store, right? It's a convenience. So it is going to stay. And the penetration of the digital, when we consider in the emerging economies, uh, it was limited to the channels, which are more the mobile or the network, but it is ingrained more into day-to-day -day life because how convenient we can make it for our customer, because it is not only limited to the convenience, it is basically uh, more secure, safe, and uh, sustainable. Great. Um, please, if you've got any questions uh, to, to add to this debate, uh, then please do put those in the chat. There's some questions that have already coming in so far. So I just want to pick up a question from Sasha. Um, she'd like to know more about um, integrating Google Alert for small companies. So Yasir, do you want to pick that one up, please? Uh, okay, so Google Alert is, is just a basic crawler. So there are quite a few free crawlers out there. So what you have to do, you just have to go on Google Alert and just set up your customer name or something related to SME, or for example, you set up an alert related to Futech, you can even set up an alert related to Gavin or anyone. So anyone you want to set up an alert who is famous enough, and you start getting those alerts every other day. So people use it for various reasons. They use it for stock investment to keep a track on company, we use it to keep a track on our companies. And as soon as there is anything that is mentioned positively in the news, we make sure we are the first one before even they post it on their social media. So okay. it, it really know, works I, sometimes, yeah. And then you add your customers' names to that Google alert so that you can to pick up yeah. on good news from theirs, as you said, and champion that on your own social channels. Yeah, so it's all about, so the behavior, as Ritesh mentioned, that behavior is still the same. It's all about consumer rights. So people are still the same. So 50 years ago, there was a book uh, by by Dale Carnick that people name is the most important thing that that, that they listen, right? And that, that became a most important thing in the sales training. Similarly, in social media is the same thing, right? Whenever you are responding, if you tag them, use their name, when you are responding to them, it makes a lot of difference. It's just a small, small things that makes a lot of difference in the social world. And 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 well, there's nothing more bigger a B2B hack than celebrating them, than cheering for them, or just connecting one or two companies socially, and you will attract a lot more companies, a lot more people uh, as you're following. Yeah, I think the book that you see to refer to is Dale Carney, is classic how to win friends and influence people and the quote in there is the sweetest sound in any language is a person's own name and how true that is and that really does build rapport connection and the empathy point to speak to what Ritesh was talking about earlier on. Um, Godfrey asks uh, he'd like to learn more about how you can help businesses close more deals and how can you get in touch so just as um, uh, I asked for kind of other comments from all the members of the, the panel uh, Godfrey your question will be answered by Angel uh, uh, in, in, a, in a few minutes time um, but um, sort of any other observations Ritesh around B2B growth hacks around changing trends towards digitization about actions that companies should be taking right now if they're going to ride successfully ride this wave of increased digitization 
So buy rather than build. That is the first and foremost thing I would say when you are in a business, uh, because technology is cheap, services are available, products are available out there. You need to figure out the right product and the partner, and do not try and reinvent the wheel. Do not build it, because I'm sure uh, you can customize them. That's for sure. But so buy rather than build. At the same time, you need to focus on uh, the sustainability of the business, and it needs to be future proofing as well that what sort of services that you're going to provide to your customer and how it will change with their change in behavior. So it needs to, your business model need to have a flexibility and that's what generally I call it as an organizational agility. You need to build in your businesses and uh, sustainable development and try and think about the sustainability, how you're going to support uh, the SDGs of uh, so don't think that I'm representing UN over here, though I have got a engagements, but it's the how your business is supporting the sustainable development goal SDGs, because you might, you can benefit from the various uh, government organizations or in various reasons, if you are supporting SDGs. And if you want to know about more, uh, know about this and learn more about this, you can definitely get in touch with us later on. Because it is not only around helping your customer, you're helping the customer, you're building sustainable economy, you're building sustainable businesses, as well as you are getting benefited as a business by supporting the SDGs. Fantastic. So the three points there, buy, not build, in terms of the technology, in terms of businesses that can help you reach. And that might actually be media sources as well, might be, if you're wanting to, to reach a greater number of customers and to talk to the 500 million new social media users that Yazir was talking about earlier on, you might want to buy sort of media platforms or, uh, or, or uh, products uh, to be able to get that reach. So buy, not build agility, and then uh, supporting uh, sustainability. Just quickly, Ritesh, just on the point of agility, ha agility, how can a business, how can an organization improve its agility? It's a flexibility of your business model in terms of uh, whether it's related to your suppliers, what sorts of suppliers you have, uh, understanding your supply chain, understanding your markets where you are going to target, understanding your own operational expenses. So focus on the OPEX and CAPEX, uh, which I'm pretty sure everybody knows. So uh, focusing on that and how you can build agility around, how you can adapt to the ever-changing customer behavior because what your customer is expecting today, uh, they will not be expecting the same thing six months later. So how you can keep giving them something new and that can only happen when you are flexible in your business model. And if I could build to that, also you need to add create a pro change culture where people in your organization uh, are the opposite from standing back and being resistant to change, that they're actually running forward embracing change because actually your ability to iterate, to engage with customers, to meet their changing needs, to remain relevant to the needs of your customers is going to be a differentiator between whether you rise or fall, whether you thrive or survive or even fail in these times. So a pro change culture. Couldn't agree more, uh, especially uh, when we talk around the products and the services that you're building, think around a couple of things, uh, whether it's within your organization or about your customer. So the empathy is obviously you need to build an empathetic culture within your organization and a more diverse and inclusive culture within your teams so that your people can understand customer better. Because if you take care of your people, they'll take care of your business. Uh, it's as simple as that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I think it's a Richard Branson quote, isn't it? If we look after our people, if we look after our staff, our staff will then look after our customers. So any other questions just before I sort of pass the baton back to Angel? Uh, any other questions uh, from the audience that we want to put to our panel uh, regarding digital trends, B2B growth hacks, uh, the changing trends that we're facing uh, as we sort of uh, move further into 2021 and beyond? Any other questions? I'm just having a quick look down the list. Um, just what I am, I've got one question for, for you, Yasir, is that you mentioned the 500 million new people joining social media. Um, was there a, was, from the data that you've seen, was there a preference to any particular channel, any particular social media platform? It's the first question. The related one is how can people sort of access those, the opportunities that those extra 500 million people might well present for their business? Uh, okay, so uh, Gavin, uh, 
I, we, what we have seen is across the board. So there are quite a few companies that publish it. So we use the VR social number, which is published by Hootsuite. So yes, Facebook remains the dominating, but all of the other apps like uh, you might have uh, heard about it. Microsoft is trying to buy Pinterest and Pinterest grow five folds in just 2020. So all of the social media based on every kind of demographics has wanted to go social, right? So all of them went social in their own way. And uh, every, every, every social media use, I believe, is very different from the other. So Reddit is used by different kind of a people, more like gamers and retail investors now. And Pinterest is used by more uh, people who, who are into art and others. And Facebook is remains the dominant one that is used by everyone. Now coming to how to how to retain them. So everyone is coming over there for a specific intent and uh, for a specific requirement. So if they receive the customer experience, if they receive what they are coming for in the right manner, then only they will stay. Else they will either move to some other social media or or, or some other place. So for example, people trying e-commerce, a lot of people tried e-commerce for the first time. Now, when things go to normal, it's the overall experience of the e-commerce marketplaces, is the overall experience of, of, of the technology that whether they go back to the retail or there's a permanent alteration of the habit. So they will try things, but it's up to us whether they stay or not. Oh, that's a really good point about tours, whether they stay or not. Um, uh, don't mute yourself yet, you see, because I've got another one question that's come in, uh, coming from uh, Tamanda. It's a really great one, actually. How do you ensure you're keeping relevant in whatever industry you're in? It's not as easy for a big company. How do you ensure uh, that as a big company, you're staying relevant to your customers? Okay. Uh, the the uh, it, it's, it's Sometimes it, it becomes easy when you are a big company because you get a lot of knowledge as well. So we are on the tip of all, I mean, we always have more knowledge. So what my role becomes important is bringing that knowledge at a faster speed, at a fastest speed in, in terms of the market. So for example, uh, we have a lot of Amazon sellers. Uh, people want to know how it, anything related to the new, uh, new regulations impact their business or what products they should do or what tools they should be using. So if we if we are really helpful, so I think the biggest uh, biggest win for us that we tried to be really really helpful in 2020, and that has worked wonderfully for us uh, because uh, we we were making a difference for a lot of people. A lot of small businesses got to learn a lot of things be, uh, because of us, and it really made wonders in terms of the retention and in terms of the feedback and. Uh, I mean, uh, there's no there's no other B two B hack uh, that has proven such successful for us. Even the paid marketing uh, was not as good as uh, helping people. I love that. So that also builds on the point about you were celebrating your customer success, but you were using your size, your data sources to provide insights around trends or other information for your customers to help their customers and they might not have the same reach and capability to amass and, and, and sift through data. So that, that's awesome. And um, uh, I just want to uh, thank you, Yusir. I want to direct a, a different question to you, Ritesh. And this is from uh, Godfrey. And I, I think Ritesh and the work that you've been doing uh, with a number of different organizations about engaging for, uh, across digital platforms. The question is, how are you digitally approaching your prospective customers through social media without looking too spammy, especially if you don't know them personally? And Angel can add value to that, but Ritesh, I'd like you to uh, to speak to that first, please. Uh, it, it's a very interesting uh, question. And basically that's what the recipe that everybody is looking for, how you yeah. how customer wouldn't know that what they want and you can sell it to them, right? So that's what precisely I said, as a business, you need to understand, uh, you need to have a 360 degree view on a customer, right? If they are your customer, then you would know them. But uh, so generally in the language of, we call it authentication and unauthenticated customer, right? So if they're authenticated, you have a lot more information on them. If they're not, generally, if you're looking into the social media, there are engines available. There is a technology available, which can tell you uh, about your customers or the potential customers. You can just need to define the, the rules into the platforms and it's what we call it as a subtle marketing right you don't want to push 
push it to the people people wouldn't like it so you want to understand customer and present the opportunity to them now you need to understand the technology better as well as the platforms available to you and these platforms vary regionally significantly because the regional data matters quite a lot so if i can talk about the european market if i'm selling a credit cards to customer then probably i will be directly looking into the data available from uh, the e-commerce and the payment companies and funneling down my potential customer base for a specific earnings a specific demographics and then i will be targeting accordingly so you need to understand uh, what you are targeting what is your potential sizes potential size and the type of customer and utilizing the right technology and funneling it Great, good answer, good answer. Yes, yeah. Do you want to build in that at all? Uh, so, okay, okay, okay. So, so I, I would, I would answer it on a very, uh, I mean, there is very easy example that we use. So, for example, if if I know a particular bunch of my customers, I mean, most of the time is using the technology, just basic tools, or sometimes spending a lot of time on Twitter, on Facebook. if i get to know that a few of my customers required a help regarding a particular case they are using a particular hashtag then we will make sure that we answer everything related to that and we dominate that hashtag so for example uh, if a lot of my customers want to expand in new zealand so and they are looking for more information regarding the custom processes or anything Uh, so i will make sure that uh, we have as much as information published not only from other sources as ritesh mentioned it's time to leverage on other uh, other assets so we leverage on other content as well we give them credit it's a win win so we have we try to find win win with most of the most of the solution providers in the market and we make sure that with that those bunch of people queries are really really helped so that is that is our basic we try to dominate on the basis of that we try to keep it really natural we uh, we try to make sure that uh, we are working for those customers rather than working for our company so there is not a single ounce of marketing over there and surprisingly it does the job and do you use any tools to track those hashtags and then to be able to to search on those hashtags okay i try to go uh, usually in the in the raw form but we have uh, explored the tools like hootsuite i use various tools like brand 24 uh, free tools like talkwalker so talkwalker is another uh, crawler that i use which gives me all the hashtags and if anything mentioned regarding uh, on twitter about my company or any other company and any conversation where i want to jump in any reddit forum where i want to uh, spam as well sometimes so it gives all of that fantastic brilliant uh, any closing comments from yourself ritesh i would just like to highlight one thing yes uh, we live in a digital world and where data is everything so if i can just give you a bit of insight around payment companies they hold the biggest data right and if you consider the payment companies like whether it's a paypal mastercard visa uh, they are payment companies so by default we understand their business is transaction business but let me clarify this their revenue is only one third from the transaction business they earn lot more money from the data that they hold and they sell so uh, and you can even you as a business can hook on to their data uh, visa has got visa analytics master uh, card has got mlri a pretty insightful data which you can utilize for your businesses as well because ultimately you want to understand a uh, customer demographics their spending habits where they spend what they spend and how they spend and then you can understand their habits and sell your products or services great i love that gents thank you so much for for your contribution today um angel let me pass the baton back to you fantastic thank you so much gavin thank you ritesh yasir and obviously everyone that's here today so just some key points um that i think we've learned today is that we need to understand our customers we need to understand who they are where they are what size whether it's a company size and what and how they want to be contacted 
You know, we are, digital is no longer an option. Customers have moved digitally and customer experience is very important right now, as you see mentioned. And, you know, questions that companies and business leaders, sales leaders all over the world need to start asking themselves is, what value are we sharing in the marketplace right now? Um, because that's really important. You know, another key learning point that uh, I picked up today is that change will continue to accelerate and more and more people and businesses will go digital from here. You know, therefore it's important for businesses to adapt strategies such as social media and digital marketing, but integrate them with the company and have communications go, go run through in that way. So it, it's, we are in a delicate time. And obviously as Ritesh and Gavin and Yashir both mentioned is that behavior is still the same from the customers. But what's more important, also coming back to the question that Godfrey asked is that personalization is gonna be utmost important. Um, it's gonna be important that we also celebrate our customers and we look to assist each other in getting customers, but helping each other is also key. So, I mean, just to close off things, if, if you are struggling to fill your pipeline with enough qualified prospects that turn into paying customers, not making quota or falling short of revenue goals, or finally spending too much time looking for prospects and too little time closing deals, then I invite you to contact us and we can see how Futec can help you. I've placed my link in the chat and until next time, please join our network on LinkedIn where we share valuable insights on industry trends, customer behavior, and the current business ecosystem. So thank you so much for everyone for joining. Thank you, Gavin. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Angel. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.